for our big holiday competition question. How heavy is a flower? And how do you ski uphill? Whoa! Pick up a five pound note. Easy, Fred. You do um, a day's work. At the end of it, you get a fiver, put it down, you go, oh, thanks very much, I'm going Easy. up. Easy. Yeah, I've never been lucky to f lucky enough to find one, to be honest. But I would give it in to the police, probably. Oh, yes, of course. You <laughs> Goody two shoes. Take a <laughs> bottle each. Place your bottle, mouth downwards, yes. on the five pound right. note. Right. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, pick up that five pound note uh -oh. without touching the bottle uh -oh. and without knocking it over. Go on, Gareth, it's, it's easy. Easy, it's an inertia easy, now. Easy, yeah. you go like that and you Whisk go... Whisk it you go, away, oh. Gareth. Easy peasy, no, yes. No, 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 it's going to be a slight Carol. similar thing, but slightly... Very similar. good, let me show you how to do it. All you need is a pencil. Uh, hey. Fred, you yes. never said that. But you never asked me. Yeah. And you wrap the five-pound note very delicately around the pencil. Absolute precision and delicacy required. And you gently roll it up and very gently, oh, You're touching gently, the bottle, aren't you? With the five-pound note. Oh. Yeah. And there we are. That's how you pick up a five pound note. <laughs> how do you taste food with your eyes? Oh, no, Gareth, not with your you eyes. You taste food with your mouth. Yes, with your taste buds. Yeah. All right, let's conduct an experiment. You hungry, Fred? Oh, I'm starving. OK, well, um, would you like to try something I cooked for you a little bit earlier? What have you got? Huh? Ooh, macaroni <laughs> cheese. Have a taste I of that, I am well, very Fred. partial to macaroni cheese. Mmm, scrumpy, 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 lumpy, scrumpy, jumpy. <laughs> yes, all right, I think you've got the idea. Put this on, Fred, it's a blindfold. We're going to see if you can actually taste that macaroni cheese with your eyes. Of course I can. Yes. OK. It's going to be just the same. No difference at all. Come on, then, I'm hungry. Hang on, Fred, there we are. You've got the blindfold on, yes. here it comes. Taste this for me, would you? Yeah. Mmm, I told you. It's lovely, it's just okay. the same. blindfold off. Mm. Tastes no different. Oh. <laughs> did you give me that? Yes, I did. But oh. don't worry, Fred. They're both exactly the same. They will taste the same. This has just got blue food colouring in it. Well, did you try it? And uh, no, even ah. though I made it, <laughs> I know that it's not supposed to be that colour, and I couldn't face touching that, I'm afraid. Right. But never mind. Maybe some dessert, Fred. Oh, pudding. Yes? Rice pudding? Oh, rice pudding. Mm. My favourite, yeah. Tastes good? Mmm. Do you want some of this? No, I don't like the green one. No, how about this one at the end, then? Ooh, strawberry jam. Go on, have a taste, Fred. Magic. Mm. Mm. I love strawberry jam in rice pudding. Which tastes better? Strawberry jam one. Really? Mm. Sorry, Fred, they're all exactly the same. No strawberry jam? There's none in there. Your eyes tasted strawberry jam. It's just colouring. You're tasting, Fred, with your eyes. I don't, still don't fancy that green one, though, Summer. Oh, quite right, too. Well, again, it's the wrong colour for rice pudding, but maybe you'll get your appetite back before the morning, yes? Oh, yes. Yes, and you'd like oh, some breakfast? cornflakes. Yeah, I love cornflakes. Lovely cornflakes with some lovely blue ah. coloured milk. Actually, Gareth, I'm... I'm full up now. <laughs> That's because Fred tastes not just with his tongue, but with his eyes, as we all do. How do you read hieroglyphics? Here is a piece of papyrus. Now, people wrote with hieroglyphics until about 1,600 years ago, and then 1,599 years ago, people forgot how to read them. So Egyptologists, people who research into the ancient Egyptians, assumed for many years that a picture of something represented that thing. So a picture of a bowl just represented a bowl. And so things remained until this was dug out of the ground. Now, this is a copy of the Rosetta Stone. And this has the same piece of writing in three different ancient languages, including at the top here, hieroglyphics. Now, a Frenchman called Champollion studied it for 20 years until he cracked the code of hieroglyphics. He discovered the ancient Egyptian alphabet. Now, here we have something that could mean water, or it could be the letter N. So it had sounds and pictures. Let's play the game. I'll have a vowel, please, uh, Carol. Your first vowel could be a vulture or the letters A, E or O. Um, could I have a consonant, please, Carol? A consonant coming up. This could be a mouth or the letters R or L. 
I think this time I'll have a vowel again, please, Carol. Another vowel again, a vulture, or A, E, or O. Uh, could I have another consonant, please, Carol? Uh, this time it could be a basket or the letters K or C. Yes, this time I'll have a consonant as well, please, Carol. And that other consonant could be a mouth or the letters R or L again. Your time starts now. Oh, I wish I'd gone... Is that, is that a C or a, is that a, no, is that an A or an E, Ben? No, it's, it's, uh, it's an O, isn't it? Oh, oh is that an O? Oh, dear. Time up. Here we have a five-letter word, C-A-R-O-L. That's what I've decided I've spelt Carol. But the problem was the scribes who used to write in hieroglyphics often missed out the vowels, and you could put in whatever vowels you felt were appropriate. So you could have Carol, but you could also have Killer, or Coral, or Colour, even. Bit of a problem. Another problem was that often the scribes wrote, not just from left to right, but whenever they wanted to, they wrote from right to left. So this could be Ka-ra-ola, Carol. Yeah, but the other way, you could also say Rollock. A. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. Hmm. Another problem was that sometimes the scribes wrote from top to bottom. So here we could have G, A, R, E, F, Gareth, or over here, F, R, E, D, Fred. Excuse me, Carol. Why mm -hmm. is there a slug in my name? <laughs> it is a horned viper. Oh, great consolation. So how do you read hieroglyphics? You study for 20 years, and even then you might find it slightly difficult. How heavy is a flower? Flowers aren't heavy, Fred. They're light. Yeah, right. Put a few little flowers on my scales there and hardly anything happens at all. And indeed, if I put in a whole bunch of flowers, I've still only got 50 grams. Not very heavy at all, is it? And even if we add a really big sunflower, we're still only talking about another 20 grams or so, really. Mm -hmm. We're not talking heavy. No. No. When we're talking heavy flowers, we've got to go on a long journey. You'd have to come with me from the United Kingdom to the jungles of Indonesia, because in the jungles there, we would find the Raphaelesia flower. It doesn't look too big, does it? No. But would you like to see a life-size model yes. of the Raphaelesia flower? Yes, I have. And here it is. How, How many have you got? I've only got one. Believe it or not. Whoa. So you'd be walking through the jungle when suddenly Good you'd great. come across that. <laughs> now that is a big flower, is it, it not? It's a up water. to five feet across, that's one and a half meters. Looks quite pretty, but in fact it's quite an evil plant, this, because it sucks all the goodness out of the plants around it, very cleverly, leaving just enough for the flower to regrow so it can do it all over again. The vampire of the flower world. <laughs> and you would know when you were getting close to this particular pl plant because of the evil stench of rotting meat. Ugh. And it smells horrible to attract flies. Not just a few flies, but hundreds of flies, which it uses for pollination so the species will reproduce. And it is a heavy plant. How heavy? Yeah. As much as seven kilograms. And that's the equivalent of all these flowers put together. So how heavy is a flower? Very heavy indeed in this case. And Carol, don't say I never give you any flowers, will you? <laughs> how do you ski uphill? <laughs> Ouch. That would be no good to cross-country skiers who do need to be able to ski uphill sometimes. So they developed a special one-direction-only ski using animal fur. Have you ever stroked a cat? You'll realise that um, a cat's fur goes in one direction. You can only stroke it in one direction. Stroke it against the grain, as it were, and you get lots of friction. Now, that's very useful to cross-country skiers. So they fitted patches of animal fur at intervals to the underside of cross-country skis, allowing them to... Slide downhill like that. Turn it round, though, and you get friction. You're able ah. to walk or ski, if you like, uphill. And that system actually works so well that it's more or less the same thing that's in use today. This is a model of the underside of a set of cross-country skis. And look, see these ridges? They give you a grain in one direction. Easy to go that way, hard to go that way. And the upshot of this is cross-country skis 
slide down, but turn them round, and they provide you with plenty of grip. That's the model. Let's have a look at the real thing. This is a cross-country ski. A Langlaff ski. A Langlaff ski, yes, is correct. Uh, and on the other side, listen, no friction that way. Ridges giving friction that way. That's the theory, but what about the practice? In practice, cross-country skis do stop you from slipping backwards, but when you get to the top of the hill, you've got to remember they don't stop you from sliding forward! <laughs> How can a sheet of paper be stronger than a ruler? Rubbish, of course it can't. Yes, it can. This is very dangerous how this one, Freddie. I'm going to place the ruler on the edge of the table, put my safety specs on, and what I'm going to do is whack it with a hammer at this end. Now, for it to work, I need a weight at that end, don't right. I? So, I'm not going to use that, because that would be cheating and I never do that. I'm going to use a piece of paper, well, like so. Work, will it? Yes, it will, because I have air pushing down on the piece of paper, a column of air going from here all the way up through the roof to the very top of the atmosphere, the weight of all of that air creating atmospheric pressure, pushing down on the paper, so when I hit it, Mm. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. What I need is more air. So put another ruler on there, open the sheet of paper up. No, oh, that's even Place weaker that. Now. No, 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 no. Place that on top of the ruler. More air, no more chance. area, more weight. No and now, chance. one, two, three. Ah! One broken ruler, and that is how a piece of paper can be stronger than a ruler. Very good. Thank you. Good how. How do you make Melba toast? You know, that lovely, delicate, Sylph-like, mm. slimline oh, right. toast mm. that you can have with pate you like and mm. the like. Lovely. It is beautiful mm. and it is delicate. How do you make it? Well, you'll need a slice of bread no, very in the too toaster. Thick. Too thick. Maybe it may not be. We shall see. Melba toast, named after Dame Nellie Melba, and she was an opera singer from Australia. Out of the toaster. Cut off the crusts. Comme mm. ça. Still too thick. No. And then, using an ordinary knife, not a particularly sharp one, you slice through the toast. It will not be difficult because, of course, on the inside it is lovely and soft. And you slice all the way through and then pop both slices back <gasps> into the toaster. Ah, uh, yes. And after 15 or 20 seconds, out comes your Melba toast. You can eat it straight away, or if you pop it into an airtight container, you can keep it for up to a month. And that's how you make Melba toast. How do you decorate your room with a can of beans? This is what you do. Go on then, amaze us. Take the wrapper off, right? Take the wrapper off. There's your can of beans. And then you need some washing line or rope. Don't use string, you need washing line or rope. Something fairly thick. Apply glue to your washing line or rope and stick it around the top and the bottom of the can of beans like so. Then, you put bits in between the top and the bottom, connecting like this. Bits of rope there, there, there. <clears throat> now, where is Jones leading to, I bet you're wondering. Well, <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, it had crossed our minds. <laughs> this is the answer. What you do is you take your prepared can of beans and you roll it in a paint tray so it's absolutely covered in paint. Then, using lining paper, which is sort of blank, cheap wallpaper, really, let me just put that on there, right? Watch this. You can actually print patterns. Here it goes. And the weight of the beans actually helps the printing work. Ooh. Good, eh? Oh, lovely. It, it good. doesn't matter that the pattern isn't perfect because it's actually art. And so good an art is this that you can actually cut your pattern out and you can stick it to the walls of your room. And I have to show you my bedroom. Come and see this. Oh, there. Yep, my whole bedroom has been decorated with a can of baked beans. Look at this. Borders around the window, strips around the edge of the room. And if you experiment with the pattern of rope on your baked beans, and indeed the size of baked bean cans themselves, you can create your own individual patterns. I tell you, Carol Frick, where are you? Cool. No, oh, you've got to think big, Gareth. Look, do it in style. That's how it's done. Absolutely <laughs> right, Brilliant. Please. All right, that's how you can decorate your bedroom or the house studio with a can of beans. And that's... How for now! Here's a quick how. How can you stop your sticky drawers sticking? Wash them more often. Oh, Gareth! Not an underwear how, is it, Freddie? No, thank you very much, Carol. I'm, of course, referring to chests of drawers. How do you stop your drawers sticking? You run a candle along the top two edges of each drawer, and the thin layer of waxed leaves will help them run smoothly forevermore. How about that? Oh. Please say hello!